Okay, guys. So, what is cloud computing? In the market, right? You would have heard about cloud. Someone might have heard about cloud computing. What is cloud? Right? So, the experienced guys, they might have already been worked or might have seen something, but the patients, they, they would be, most of them will be new to this class. Okay. So, before moving into this cloud computing class, you need to understand why you want to learn this cloud computing and what are the benefits of using it, right? That you need to understand first. That's why I kept this one. I designed this slides for you to understand better why you want to use the cloud computing and what is the benefit of using it, okay? So let's start. Let me just make it, uh, slides flowing here. So first thing is why to learn cloud computing. So cloud computing is changing the face of technology. That means current technology era, whatever in the market, every seconds, every minutes, there is new technology coming out to the market. Now, now if you see in the market, the artificial intelligence, machine learning, which are taking over the market very seriously actually. And by the time it, it grows up, you have to learn those new technology and cope up with, with the growth. If you don't go with them parallelly, you lose the job, you lose the progress, okay? So the cloud computing is the changing is changing the face of the technology, the growing prevalence of subscription models and next generation technologies is paving the way for companies to become more efficient. Become more efficient. First, I'm telling why to learn cloud computing, then I'll discuss about what is cloud computing, then we'll move forward, okay? So we say as it is paving the way for companies to become more efficient. We'll discuss in our upcoming slided, uh, slides, what is this more efficient? What was before and how they are getting efficient now, okay? And it provides multiple benefits, which includes higher productivity, agility, cost and operational efficiencies. It provides on-demand, computer system capabilities such as data storage to the cloud and computing power. So without requiring the end user to manage these services directly. So cloud computing depends on resource sharing and often operates with a pay-as-you-go model. So most of you will not understand what is this pay-as-you-go model. Right, pay as you go model. So, what is this pay as you go model? Have you heard about rent? If you're going to stay at a hotel, so what do you have to go? You have to book that hotel, stay for one day, two days, three days. Then, when you leave that hotel room, you have to pay the prices for those days you used and then you go. Similarly, in the cloud market, whatever the service, whatever the computing power, whatever the things you are going to use, you have to use for specific days. Your work is done, pay for the price, then go away. That is called pay as you go model. You don't have to, that's why, Cloud computing is so demand, is highly demand in the market. Most of the companies, even every companies, I could say, every companies are migrating their infrastructure to the cloud. So when I say migrating their infrastructure, means the on-premises infrastructure, okay? To cloud. That's why there's a high demand 
in the cloud computing to them. Even a, if a developer also, even a test engineer, even a support engineer, everyone, companies requiring to know the cloud. The companies, the organizations are now expecting those engineers should have some cloud computing knowledge because they are migrating their infrastructure on premises infrastructure towards the cloud. Every companies nowadays, starting from small scale to big scale companies, from startup companies to tier one, tier two, tier three companies, they are all migrating there towards cloud. Okay. So cloud computing technology makes it easier to perform backups, recover from disaster, and establish business continuity while saving companies money. All this term, whatever I'm just reading it out, whatever I'm just explaining you, everything will be explained in detail in our upcoming slides, in our upcoming services, okay? Don't worry about that, whatever things you are not understanding now, we have multiple times we are going to use these words in our cloud journey, okay? So if you don't understand also, keep in note of those things, how you learn first thing, how you learn a new technology, <clears throat> how you remember these things. Tell me. The thing is, whatever new things are coming in your mind, right? You may not be recollect that you may it may not be um no um correlate with anything right make a note of that and try to find it out where you have to find it out google it right google is the best library best index best database where you can find everything if you are dedicated that's why i in the first of the uh starting of the class i said i need dedications from you I need determination. If you are not determined to learn something and to achieve your goal, you cannot. You have to determine to find something and it's something which you have to do by yourself. I am, see, I'm just guiding you. I'm giving you the knowledge, whatever I have, but I cannot feed everything in your mind, right? You only person who can feed everything in your mind by doing practices okay by doing by yourself that's why if you have seen the scientists the research people right they are more talented why because they keep doing their researches every day every second they will be doing some researches and their minds minds will be thinking uh, 200 times faster than us they'll, they'll be every second they'll be thinking something new right so all these things you have to do by yourself. Don't waste time. I would suggest to you, you have three months, be with me. Stop your, uh, I, 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 will not, I will not say like stop your mobile phone, but at least from social, social media, from all these things, at least stop a few days for next three months and just uh, focus on the what you are learning. And I will guarantee you, you will be, uh, I'll guarantee you will be uh, like landed a job within the three months, definitely, okay? So <clears throat> the next thing is the future generation should be aware of the concepts and technologies that save the cloud. There is a need to understand the opportunities that lie ahead. Cloud computing is powering digital transformation at speed and scale. The future generation, you and your next generation who are coming should be aware of the concepts of and technologies that save the cloud. And it is powering digital transformation at speed and scale. Regardless of your overall goals, learning cloud computing is a valuable and impressive skill to add to your resume. Then why you have to learn again cloud? 
in the market, the cloud computing people, the engineer, is being paid high salary. Okay, and it has lots of opportunities in the market. For the next 10 years, nobody can beat you if you are good and strong in the cloud computing. There are lots of opportunities coming in the next 10 years, guys. And you have to be coupled up with that. And it's paying also high salary. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is the feature generation should be our of that and let's see if you see this diagram okay cloud computing market size from 2021 to 2030 if you compare in the usd in the billion if you see here in the 2021 it was 380.25 dollar billion and you can see the growth how it could be in 2030 it could be more than that. Someone had predicted like by 2024, it will be around 300 or $200 uh, a billion dollar. But now before their predictions also, it has crossed the milestone. This is how the market cloud computing market is going. When we learn this cloud computing, right? What is cloud computing? That time you will understand this particular things why it is so popular at them, okay? Now, next, this is the cloud computing market size by region. If you see here, the North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, Latin America, and Middle East and Africa, all you can see how the growth is looks like. Our Asia Pacific, our Asia Pacific is comes here, right? That is also getting, now they're slowly capturing the market. So Northern America also have this is significantly more than every other region. So this is what the growth is going on. Now let's see what is cloud computing? What is cloud computing? Now you learn why you need to learn cloud computing, right? Let's understand what is cloud computing. The three things I'll tell you again, you have to remember, whatever things you are learning newly or want to do, first you have to keep in your mind why you want to learn this. Why you, are learn, why you want to learn this and what is it? What is it and why you want to learn it? And after learning, how you implement it? If you expertise in these three things, then nobody can do it. Why you want to learn it? What is it and why you want to learn it? And how you implement it? Okay. So what is a cloud computing thing? Why it was so popular in the market? So a cloud is a virtual computing platform. Virtual computing platform physically located in a data center of different geographical location, which can be accessible through internet. You got my point? Yes, sir. A cloud is a virtual computing platform physically located in a data center of different geographical location, which can be accessible through internet. I'll give you a small example here. Whatever the meetings we are currently doing, we have people from different region, different areas of, someone from Bhubaneswar, someone from uh, Kotak will be there, someone from Chennai, someone from Mumbai, and someone from UK also there, right? They, how they connected? They have connected through the internet. And now they can see my laptop here. They connected to the virtual machine, the Zoom's meeting where I have shared my laptop. They virtually connected everywhere. 
Now this is one thing. Another thing is sometimes you might have seen you would have a computer or laptop being placed somewhere and you will connect from your room. You will have their IP address and you will using remote desktop or using some other ways you will try to connect their laptop. We used to connect it, right? So that is virtually placed somewhere and we need internet connection to connect that machine. That is called cloud. Whatever the computing resources we are currently using, not only we, most of the, everyone, you can say not most of the, every company is now, they're virtually connecting to a platform, which is located some other location. Suppose a company is open in Bangalore, and their data center will be placed in Mumbai, or might be placed in Singapore, right? They can, how they'll connect? They'll connect to the internet. And there, all the cloud data centers will be there in Singapore and Mumbai. But the person who we are, we are using, they'll be using from Bengaluru location. Okay? So it's the delivery of computing services over the internet, which is otherwise known as the cloud. What is this computing services, guys? It is the delivery of computing services over the internet, which is otherwise known as cloud. So this computing services is nothing but these services include servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, and intelligences, a lot more are there. Cloud computing offers faster innovation, flexible resources, and economies of scale. That's why it is so popular. Let me give you one uh, um, example. Let me give you a real-time example. Whenever you go to the market to buy a laptop or a desktop, <clears throat> what you have to do? First, you have to search for the brand right the company from which company and you have to see about the configurations which is most important to know what is the processor what is the ram size what is the storage right what is the uh, operating system the processor right the hardware everything you have to look into that after then you have to choose one and buy Similarly, in the cloud market also, in the cloud computing, you have to choose the services, whatever you need. You have to go to the, we have to log into the cloud service. You have to find based on your requirement, what is the server you need? What is the computing power? What is the storage? What is the processor? What is the operating system? All these things, what is the database? Whatever the things you need, you can just go together, bundle it and get that one. Then once you get it, what will happen? You have to use it and ask for the price decided by the cloud computing provider, cloud service provider, you have to pay for that. Either monthly, yearly, uh, monthly or annually, or you have to uh, pay uh, like as long as you use it. If you don't use, you have to just leave it, pay whatever balance and come out like rent, okay? This is how you have to do that. So cloud computing offers faster innovation, flexible resources and economies of scale. So there are a lot more things we'll discuss here, okay? A lot more things and uh, you'll clearly understand again there, okay? So why to use cloud computing? Why to use cloud computing again? Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet by using pay as you go. We have already discussed this thing in the faster sli fast slide, but still I have written few more points here. So what will happen here? It will lower your operating costs, run your infrastructure more efficiently, scale as your business needs change. To put it, to put it in another way, cloud computing is a way to rent compute power and storage from someone else's data center. 
try to understand this line. Cloud computing is a way to rent the compute power and storage from someone else data center. You can treat cloud resources like you would resources in your own data center. When you are done using them, you give them back, give them back, and you are built only for what you use. Just before I was telling you all, right? So you are going to rent something. So instead of maintaining the CPUs and storage in your data center, you rent them for the time that you need them. The cloud provider takes care of maintaining the underlying infrastructure for you. The cloud enables you to quickly solve your toughest business challenges and bring cutting edge. Let me explain all this, whatever thing is written in simple two format. One is the real time, another is the technical computing format. In the real time, if there is a requirement for you to build a house, to build a house, so what I have to do? First, you have to look for a land. Then you have to appoint a designer, right? A civil engineer or someone we can design for you, an architect, right? Then you have to spend lots of money to put your infrastructure there. You first purchased a land, then you constructed a house there. Then you have to hire another interior design designer to design it. You have to buy lots of things for your house to make it good, right? Another way, what you can do? Either you can go to the <coughs> builders and ask for the for a house. What will happen? The builder will show you the buildings or the apartments which are already been constructed. And you have to choose based on your requirements. Suppose you need a two BHK house or three BHK house. Then you have to pay for the prices and you use that one. So what is the difference here? If you're going to buy a land and construct the house and whatever things you are, you're spending lots of money, uh, lots of time, lots of effort there. And also another thing is you have to maintain it till the time you stay there. If you have meant, if you have uh, uh, prepared your own house, if you have created your own house, right? But if you have rented one, sorry, if you have uh, got, uh, if you have got one uh, apartment, what will happen? The maintenance part will be taken care of by the apartment owner or the builders. You have to only pay for the maintenance thing. That is the real time what is happening. And think about the company's way, the technical way, the technology way, how it is good, how, how it is differentiated. If you think about one on premises, suppose I got a big project and uh, I just want to uh, um, build up a company. What I can do? I can uh, uh, go to the market and see for a house, right? Uh, or I can construct a house myself, or I can see a house for the rent. After getting the house, I need the data center to be established. I need the infrastructure to be set up. So when I th think about the infrastructure, I have to put lots of things there, right? The computing power, the servers, the storage, the database, the network, the internet, everything I have to put it, I have to buy and I have to do the setups. Apart from that, then I have to I have to look for a network engineer. I have to look for a database engineer. I have to look for a um, server engineer. I have to look for a, um, a maintenance engineer. I have to look for a, a building maintenance people. I have to look for a data center maintenance people. Lots of things I have to spend there, right? If I go with on-premises by our own things. But if I go to the cloud way, what I have to do? I don't have to worry about anything. I simply go to the market, choose whatever the service, whatever the compute power I need. Suppose I need three servers having five terabyte of storage, 10 GB of memory, or this speed of network, all these things I need. What I'll do, go to the market, just 
see, select whatever things you need, immediately get it and pay the price for that. Use it. Within the fractions of minutes or seconds, you'll get all your infrastructure ready. But if you go to on-premises or your own way, you have to really take lots of time to establish, to set, do the setups. Again, apart from that, we, once you do the setups, you have to do maintenance. You have to spend hell, lots of money there, lots of money there. But here now, we are easily getting the services from the cloud and setting up our company. Nowadays, a people, a, a person, if he's thinking about to build up a company to, uh, to, uh, to anything, he's not actually setting up his own data center or setting up his own servers. He's directly going to the market, cloud market, and just buying it, just getting the rent and using it. Once the project is over, he can just remove that. Uh, he can just um, um, no, uh, come out from there and you have, don't have to pay anything. But think about that if you got a big project and instructors, you constructed everything, you put the data center and all, and the client goes away. What do you have to do? The data center will be wasted. You have to again sell that out or in a half rate or something you have to do, it will be a huge loss for you, right? But in case of cloud, simply you have to let it go. You don't have to pay anything for that. Just leave it. Just stop the things, whatever you have rented. Right? That's the good benefit. That's why we're using the cloud computing. That's why it says lower your operating costs, run your infrastructure more efficiently, scale your business needs changes. If you have one client today and tomorrow, if it increased to Suppose 10 clients, what will happen? You can immediately scale your business. You need immediately any resources you need. You can go to the market, cloud market, and can get it. Okay. Now let's see about what is the benefit of using cloud? What is the benefit of using cloud? Now, the first benefit is scalability. I don't, in the first class, I don't want to put everything in your head, in your mind. I'll just give you some uh, things to understand about the cloud itself and the rest of the things I'll keep you for, for our next class, okay? Uh, I understand because we'll, we'll slowly start the class and then once we move forward and you are up to date with the classes, then we can uh, speed up the classes so so that uh, whatever things we learn in the services in the cloud you will be uh, um, uh, able to uh, find and uh, match the things in the uh, those uh, areas okay so what is the benefit of using cloud scalability we can increase and decrease the resources as for the demand we can increase and decrease the resources as per the demand, no need to pay unnecessary for the resources which we do not need. Scale up and scale down automatically. As your business increases, you can scale up. As your business decreases, you can scale down. So what is this scale up and scale down? That means I'm talking about if you want to get new servers, if you need four or five servers, you can immediately get it. And if your business goes away, you don't need servers to be there. You can scale down. Suppose you, uh, in the real time, if you have opened a company, you've got uh, more uh, projects, more clients. You've got, suppose, uh, 10 laptops. Okay. If the, your client goes away, what will do with those 10 laptops? No use, right? Either you'll sell and half sell, or you'll wait other projects to come to use those laptops. Unnecessary, you purchase that one and you're paying for that. It's just, laptop is very simple one, it's okay, manageable. But setting up the infrastructure is huge costly, right? The next one is storage. Scalability, you understand? We can increase and decrease resources as for our demand, as for the business demand. Storage. Same for the storage as well, like we can increase and decrease as for the storage demand comes. We can increase and decrease the storage 
as per our need. Low cost storage backup provided. So whenever we talk about storage, whenever we talk about database, backup is always must, should be there, right? Must to have, the backup must to have there. So it provides low cost storage backup being provided. Then we have data recovery. This is also most important, guys. Whenever we talk about the cloud, we don't have to worry about the data loss. Data recovery, no need to worry about any data loss. Cloud data loss prevention, that is called DLP, data loss prevention, helps keep an organization sensitive and critical information safe from, safe from cyber attacks insider threats and accidental exposure. It provides a great feature to recover your data. What does this mean? Data recovery. When you have your own infrastructure, you have to worry about your data loss. You have to take the backups very frequently. You have to worry about uh, cyber attacks. You have to worry about the theft, right? You have to strengthen your security. You have to spend lots of money to strengthen, strengthen to strengthening your security. That is most important. But here you don't have to worry about at all because everything will be managed by the cloud service provider. Next one is data security. A crucial component of cloud data security is data integrity, preventing unauthorized modifications or deletion, and ensuring that data remains as it was when originally uploaded. So, see, what are the things, benefits we are getting it from the cloud? That's why it is so popular in the market. Now, if you talk about, again, the maintenance. At the last, the maintenance. If you set everything in the on-premises data center, the maintenance, you have to take care of everything and make sure everything is up to date and all good, right? Now, but in case of cloud, the maintenance will be taken care by the cloud service provider. Will be take, man, taken care by the cloud service provider. So well maintenance provided by the cloud service provider to maintain your data and resources. The maintenance cloud offers a unique opportunity for your maintenance team to meet uptime and production demands without sacrificing quality of work or maintenance KPI. So in our cloud case, you don't have to worry about maintenance. You have to only focus on your deliveries. You have to focus on your development. You have to focus on a new applications to build, new things to generate. You have to focus on the delivery. You have to focus on the customer certificate satisfaction. You don't have to worry about your maintenance. You don't have to worry about your KPIs. The quality of work you can deliver to your customer if you are going to use the cloud. Okay. Now let's see about this different cloud service providers. In the current market, I was talking about the cloud service providers. What is this cloud service provider meaning? Who provides cloud service, right? Who provides computing services? That's called the cloud service provider. We have very few, I have written, there are be hundreds of cloud service providers. I have written very few here. AWS, Microsoft Azure, DigitalOcean, Google Cloud, GCP, IBM, Linode, Oracle, all these are the cloud service provider. Very few I have written, just counting, right? There are hundreds plus service providers available in the market. And there are three which are more popular in the market. Popular in the market, one is AWS, that is nothing but our Amazon Web Service, AWS, and Microsoft Azure, other one is Google Cloud, GCP, Google Cloud Platform, or GCP. So why it is so popular in the market? AWS is, as I said, AWS is so popular, then Microsoft Azure, then Google Cloud. If you see this diagram, 
cloud infrastructure services in the market. By quarter three, 2022, you can see Amazon or AWS has shared the market 34% revenue within the, with the billion. You can see here the billion dollar. 34% market, market has captured by AWS. 21% market has captured by Microsoft, Azure, and Google has captured 11%. And the rest of the other companies, like right, next 20 companies, small, small companies was 25%. And the others, which are very small cloud service providers, they're 9%. Now you understand why we are going to learn Amazon. There are many more things I, I, I will tell you about AWS, but in our upcoming classes. But let's see in our next things what is there. Good. So that is what, guys, uh, for these cloud service things. Okay, let me finish this slide itself. So when we talk about the cloud, we have three types of cloud. One is public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. We'll discuss more details about these clouds when we move forward, okay? When you move on to learn more things on that. But now just understand what is this public cloud? No capital expenditures to scale up. Applications can be quickly provisioned and deprovisioned. Organizations pay only for what they use. And for private cloud, for private cloud, sorry, one second, let me close this one. For private cloud, hardware must be purchased for startup and maintenance. Organization have complete control over the resources and security. Organizations are responsible for hardware maintenance and updates. So the private cloud, see, that is the difference between public cloud and private cloud. For private cloud, you have to purchase your infrastructure and you have to set up everything. And you have to do the maintenance also. You have to think about security, you have to think about hardware maintenance and updates for private cloud. But for public cloud, no capital expenditure to scale up because you're not going to spend any capital money. Whatever money you have, you go and rent the public cloud and use it and pay for that. You don't have to set up your own private cloud, right? Then what is hybrid cloud? It provides the most flexibility. It's a combination of private and public. Organization determines where to run their applications. Organizations control security, compliance, or legal requirements. So when we talk about the hybrid cloud, we, the organizations must ensure which applications or which product or which software he wants to keep in public cloud, and what are the things which is most critical or sensitive, which one he wants to put in the private cloud. That the organizations has to decide. Okay. So this is what the cloud does in the market. I think uh, you'll be just listening and, uh, okay, guys. Let me stop recording, then we discuss a few things more, and then we'll stop this class.